Hi all. For our next instructive game, I'm going to hand you over to my very good friend Costas Carianis. I'd like to show you today uh, my first video for Let'sPlayChess.com. It's a game that I actually played on, on the Let's Play, Let's Play Chess.com website under my handle Fat and Mad uh, versus my opponent Neck Then. Okay. I started off, I was playing white, I started off with the English opening. Um, I found that as I get older, these kind of openings are better to play because you don't need to know so much theory, so and they're more strategic. My opponent replied with f5, kind of a Dutch defence. And I just, you know, calmly developed g3, knight f6, bishop g2, e5. And now, depending on, on where you read, this, this move e5 can be seen as being a bit of a, a weak move. Um, it allows white to play um, my next move straight away, d4. Now, the point of d4 is that it undermines uh, black's pawn on e5, forcing it either to advance or be exchanged. And, and once, it, once it does move, um, what happens is that the pawn on f5 kind of loses its soulmate, and in turn it just blocks in the bishop on c8 here. So um, that, that's the idea behind d4. Black replied knight c6, and I immediately exchanged that pawn. So you can see now that the pawn on f5 Really, all it really serves to do is block in the bishop on c8. Black took back with a knight, and I defended my pawn on c4 with b3. Black continu continued to develop with bishop c5. Um, I put my bishop on b2, and then for the first time now you can see this bishop appearing on this long, on this long black diagonal here, and that becomes an important theme during the game. Black played queen e7. I played knight h3, and now black moved his bishop again, it cost a little bit of time to b4, playing bishop b4 check. I blocked the check with knight c3, and black replied knight e4, increasing the pressure on this pinned knight on c3. Of course it has to be defended, I played rook c1, and now black surprised me by exchanging first of all, bishop takes knight, I attack back with a bishop, and now playing d6. Now, this move surprised me at the board. I think um, I had expected black here to play knight e4 takes on c3. Uh, it seemed natural to me to exchange my good black square bishop. Not wanting a second invitation, my next move just dropped the bishop back. So you can see I've maintained my bishop on this long diagonal and keeping the pressure in the long run on black's king. Black played knight g6. Now the idea here behind that is that really this pawn on f5, it really does stifle uh, black's play. What he'd like to do in the long run is to play f4 to perhaps create an attack against the, uh, the, uh, the white king and to release this rather poor looking bishop on c8. White castles, black castles. So now it's very important for, for white to find a plan. Now um, I've already mentioned that I've got this bishop on this long diagonal here, but I need to find a way to exploit the bishop pair that I have. Now, the bishop pair are very strong in open positions, so what I'd really like to do is to open the game up. It would be nice for me, for example, if I could play e2 to e4, um, you know, to get rid of this knight on e4, and perhaps create some open lines to attack the black king. My next few moves are about that, but at the same time, I have in mind that I don't really want to allow black to play the freeing move um, f4 to f5, f5 to f4, sorry. Okay, so the first move I play is e3. This solidifies my control of the f4 square. Black develops. Now I play rook e1. I'm supporting this e3 pawn in advance me, perhaps kicking this knight from e4 with f3. So the rook is very important on this, on this line, as there's a number of pieces on this line, and once I do play e4, there's some targets there for it to attack. Black brings his other rook across. And now I kick the knight from f3. So first thing I've done is I've driven, I've driven uh, black back by forcing him to play knight f6. Knight f2. Now, white now looks ideally placed to play e4. I'm controlling uh, the e4 square with four pieces. One, two, so five pieces, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, and black can't prevent me from playing e4. So in anticipation of the e-file being opened, Black plays b6, because he can see that I might be have pressure on, on the on the b7 pawn here. Uh, and now um, I'm all set up to play e4. So 
the curious thing is I don't play it immediately. Um, have a little think here about what you know what you would play as white. I think you know just maybe pause the video or give yourself five seconds. Um, as I've said, I can play e4, but I don't play it immediately. I see if you can spot what white, white's next move actually is. In fact, white's next move is f4. Uh, it seems a little bit paradoxical, but the first thing I do is I want to prevent black from advancing f4 himself. So if I just if I did play um, e4, black has this decent response f4 himself. You see the knight here. The knight that's on, on g6, the rook, and the bishop are all kind of coordinating to support this f4 advance. So I, I don't really want to allow that. So what I do is I play f4 first myself. Okay, that opens up the bishop on this long diagonal here. It can you know it can, can use my my control over e4, and actually makes this very unpleasant for black. E4 is now coming next move, and I'll be opening the e file for sure. Black moves his queen away by playing queen f7 because you can see the e file is going to be opened. And now finally, I play e4. So black is more or less forced to exchange here with the knights, and now I achieve my next strategic game of exchanging a pair of knights. Now I took the knight back, and now I take the bishop on e4. Now you can see here already I'm aligning a barrage against black's king. I've got ideas of queen d4 attacking the g7 square. Potentially I can put my queen on d3 attacking the h7 square. And that this e6 square becomes a bit of a tactical liability because in some lines I can take that uh, bishop there uh, with the rook and place my bishop on d5 just highlight that square. Lining up all these lovely pieces, all these lovely strong pieces, sorry, all these lovely st strong pieces on this diagonal here. So you can see there's tactical threats in the, in the position which makes it very difficult to defend as black. Okay, Black's next move was knight e7. Okay, so now I play queen d4 so I'm, I'm aligning my barrage here against g7 and the whole point of knight, knight e7 was to prepare knight f5 to defend the g7 square. It also attacks the queen. I drop the queen back to d3 and now I have a new barrage on this diagonal here against h7. So you can see by creating threats I'm tying black down constantly. Black drops the bishop back and now in this position here you know, black has very few moves. You can see that the white bishops and queen are aligned nicely against the black king. And the question is what to do next as white. Um, when I was younger here I'd go wildly for attack. I might just play g4, g5 hoping to exploit some weaknesses thinking that I must be winning, but I think with a bit of age and maturity one of the things you realise is that if your opponent is really tied down, there's no need to rush. Strengthen your position first before you launch the final assault, and that's what White's next three moves are about. So the first thing I do is I play Rook E2, Black plays King H8, getting the King off that diagonal. I bring my other Rook across, now you can see I've doubled Rooks in the E-file which has strengthened my position. And now, you know, what can Black do? He doesn't have um, he doesn't have many moves. Just to show you what can go wrong here, he plays king eight back to king back at, back to h8. Now, bishop d5 wins on the spot. He's got no way of breaking this pin on this diagonal here. He's got yeah, this is killing. If if he plays bishop e6, rook takes e6, rook takes, bishop takes, game over. So you can see, but you know, it's very difficult for black to find a move. What he did play was a5. Bit of a nothing move really, and now. Bishop c3, my final waiting move. Just waiting for, for black to go wrong here, actually. And in fact, he does. Next move he makes is h6, which creates a fresh weakness in his king's field. And now comes the pawn assault. g4, pushing the knight back. f5. And this creates horrible threats. I've got ideas of playing um, pawn on to f6. You know, and also swinging my queen over to h3 to attack the h6 pawn. This is very dangerous for black. He drops his bishop back and now here we go. Queen h3 attacking h6. You can see I'm just threatening to take this straight away because his defender on g7 is, is pinned by the monster bishop on c3. Knight comes back to defend h6. Bishop d5 attacks the queen threatening to eliminate the defender on g8. Queen d7 and now the killing move, rook e6. And in this position, black resigned. The reason he does resign here is because actually he's got no way of defending 
this attack on the h6 pawn I'm threatening simply sorry apologies if, if he if he exchanges I take back and now he can't defend h6 if he plays for example rook e8 I take on h6 takes the knight and that's mate right. so a very nice end to a very instructive game I hope you've enjoyed my first video for let's play chess.com please leave a feedback on YouTube and I hope to speak to you again soon